In this video, we're gonna talk about why you overtrade and how to fix it. Stay tuned. Hey traders, a very warm welcome to you. Okay, so do you overtrade? I know it was something I had to deal with a lot and I still have to be very, very careful that I don't let myself get into a situation where I'm taking too many trades. I know it's a weak spot for me, so I'm on top of it like anything. So why do we overtrade? What's the point in it? Why, why are we even doing it? And the main thing is how do we fix that problem, right? The main reason I believe why we're overtrading is very simply fear of missing out. We are taking a substandard trade or a trade that's outside the boundaries of our plan. If we've got a plan to do X, over trading is defined literally as saying, I'm going to take that trade. I'm going to take that trade. When really you've already given yourselves constraints and you're stepping outside of them. So why are we doing that? Again, I think it is purely because we are in a fear of missing out. We want to take that because we believe that if we, that's a good winner, that could be a good winner. That could be a really good trade. That looks great. Oh, that, that looks good, really good. And you start dipping around from here to there. Oh, that chart pattern looks fantastic. Or I think that's going up. And then you want to express that by putting risk on the table by making the trade. It's a really hazardous thing to do. And honestly, this, this, if you let it get too bad, is one of, just another thing that can end your career as a trader because it can get so bad that you're trading way too much. You get into a cycle of, of loss because generally speaking, these aren't gonna be good trades you know, over time because they're not planned and you're kind of diving out of your, of your remit. They're gonna be bad trades. They're gonna be losing trades. They're gonna be trades that are kind of maybe too much size uh, in a market you're not familiar with. So volatility catches you out. You're not familiar with your stop loss. You're taking something that is substandard. I mean, for me, for example, when I was sitting, I was day trading the Dow and crude oil and DAX all day, all day long, all day long, all day long. I would go through periods where, you know, you trade the open, then it would go quiet. And unfortunately, your brain starts to get recalibrated to the range. So you start looking at your chart and it's really small range, and then you end up taking a trade. When in reality, the range is nothing. There's no setup there. The pattern is irrelevant in perspective of the day, the five day, the weekly, whatever it may be. You've got this little tiny move, tiny move and all of a sudden you're putting risk on the table. Complete waste of time. Had to nip that in the bud very quickly. That was a very expensive lesson. Um, but I think that is something that's very, very common you know, for day traders, and then also for swing traders. Swing traders, you may be focusing on a basket of stocks. All of a sudden, someone, you, you notice another chart with something else, and you end up taking that trade, but it's outside of your remit, and it ends up being a problem for you. The worst thing is if you take that trade and it becomes a winner, you cement in your mind this is the good thing to do, and it's very hard to get out of it. So fear of missing out, that's why we're over trading, because we're believing the more we're trading, the more money we're gonna make. So ultimately, we've all got the same goal, is to make the most amount of money that we can in trading, Ultimately, I know there's several steps before we get to that. So over trading, we consider that if we trade more, then we're gonna make more money and we don't wanna miss the trade. You've gotta just condition yourself to say, hey, you know what? You're gonna miss the majority of the trades. In fact, almost condition yourself to go swing right the other way and say, you know what? I'm gonna miss almost all trades. And if you can say that in your mind and say to yourself, hey, you know what? That is the way it's gonna be. I am gonna miss an awful lot of trades. A lot of money is gonna be left on the table, but if I could just pick one or two out of those good trades, I'm good, I'm gonna make some money. And reframing your mind. Okay, so that's easier said than done. What kind of practical steps can you take to actually stop fear of missing out? Well, number one, of course, is the plan, right? You've gotta have a trading plan. We know that if you haven't got a trading plan, then you'll and you've got a tendency to kind of overtrade, you're gonna go crazy, you're gonna go wild, you're gonna be trading far too actively, and, and you're just gonna have no, no boundaries at all. So very simple one, have a trading plan. Even if you don't wanna go crazy deep into it, fine, just give yourself some parameters. If you're day trading, you say to yourself, okay, I'm gonna trade three times per day, or if I'm swing trading, I'm gonna take four trades per month. Whatever it may be for your strategy and system, just do that and have a limit on the number of trades you're gonna take. And what that does is, I guarantee the first time you do this, from a day trader's perspective anyway, you'll do those three very, very quickly and then you'll feel the need to trade the fourth one. You'll trade maybe the open two times, you'll trade one perhaps as we come into the afternoon session and then you'll have your three done and you'll be watching the close and you think, oh, it's a great setup and you'll take it, you'll break the rule. But ultimately after time, 
you will say to yourself, hang on, did I really need to take that midday setup? Should I have really taken the second one at the open? Let me save my bullets for when I know. And it be you become more structured with your trading. So that's just from experience from a day trading perspective. From a swing trading perspective, it's gonna be very, very similar. You're gonna say, hey, you know what? I've taken my three trades for the month, but this beauty of a setup has come along. I should have saved one. Um, and then you come back into the whole point is that you're taking the, then the very, very best trades and you become more focused on that. Is this really worth my risk capital? Is it really worth using a credit up for? Um, maybe not. And, and you're gonna occasionally wish you had taken it, but the point is you're building that muscle of being structured and not over trading. So the second thing, oh, that's, I mean, obviously plan is quite a broad thing uh, and this will probably really become, comes into the plan. But the second thing you want to do is to limit the number of, uh, of the quantity of loss that you're taking or um, the number of losing trades or the total net value of loss. Because often we over trade when um, we have lost money and we want to get it back. So we've traded a few times, a few losers, and we think, oh, we need to get in the next trade. And you're, you're eager to get it back because you think that the quicker I get into a next trade, the quicker I can get the money back, right? It makes logical sense, kind of. But in reality, all you end up doing is digging yourself a bigger hole, bigger, bigger loss because you're taking substandard trades. It's hard, but it's the right thing to do to wait for the trade that you know has got the highest probability of working, the level you want to wait for, the stock you want to wait for, the currency pair, whatever it is, and then trade that. And forget about the loss, forget about where you are in your PL, forget about where you're on the equity curve, but just looking at the next trade. Very easy trap to fall into, say I've had a lot of loss, I need to get back and trade quickly because the quicker I make back that loss, the quicker I undo mistake and feel better about myself. Forget about that, bad, bad habit. Another strategy you can do, this is probably number three, but we'll put it here, is this seems a little bit counterintuitive and I'm, I'm a bit on the fence with this one, um, but I think it can work in some circumstances, especially if you're day trading, is you end the day after a certain amount of wins. Now, some people might say, hang on, well, if you're in tune with the market, you should be pressing for all it's worth. And I agree to some extent. I think that if you're in the right phase of the market and you're in the right place as a trader, you press as hard as you can when things are working for you. I am definitely an advocate for that. But we're talking about a situation now where you're trying to fix an overtrading problem. And often, I know from experience for me as well, I would have you know, multiple wins in the day and I'd feel great. And then I give back by trading substandardly. I think I was like some sort of genius. You know, you think, oh, everything's going really well. I've had three winners really, really quickly in the morning. You know, I'm up loads. I'm well smashing my target. I'm going to carry on. And then you'd have a loser. And you think, well, I'll just see if I can get back to where I was. And you have another loser. And then it will just undo all the good work you've done. So if you're in that phase of over trading and your day trading perspective, looking at capping the amount of wins. If you have a certain amount of wins in a row, if you hit a price target, then call it a day. You know, revel in that success that you've got and, and build on that and use that as a foundation block to move on and say, listen, I you took two trades, I'm up a thousand pounds, whatever it may be, I'm doing okay. Now let's look for the next day or maybe let's close the platform and let's just assess the market and maybe write down trades that I would have taken on paper just for analysis purposes. Now, going back to the initial point, you know, is that something you should do always? Probably not. Once you've got out of this phase of overtrading, I definitely think you need to press and press and press when things are going well for you. But as I said, just repeating myself a little bit, is when we're in, when we're trying to deal with problems and we're trying to deal with issues that are going to affect our career, ultimately, if we're not careful, then we need to take some steps that may not be something that we do long term, but it's just to get over that initial hurdle. Anyway, guys, that's over trading. Let me know in the comments section below what your thoughts about over trading. Do you over trade? Is it a problem for you? What kind of solutions have you found are a good way of getting over that kind of impulse to want to trade consistently? If you like the video, give it a thumbs up please. And if you haven't yet, consider subscribing for more videos from me and other traders on this channel. Take care, manage the risk. I shall see you soon. Bye-bye.